my name is Katherine Miller, and this is the effect of roasting temperatures on coffee pH and total dissolved solids. Coffee is one of the most popular beverages worldwide. In fact, 75% of the U.S. population 20 and older reports drinking coffee, with nearly 50% drinking it daily. The purpose of this experiment was to discover the relationship between coffee roasting temperatures and coffee pH and total dissolved solids because acidity levels and total dissolved solid levels of coffee have a large impact on the taste and the health impacts of the beverage. Coffee stimulates the secretion of gastrin, which produces gastric acid, and studies show that dark roasted coffee is less effective at stimulating gastric acid. Let me to my hypothesis. If coffee is roasted at a higher temperature, then it will be less acidic and have fewer total dissolved solids, because higher temperatures have a different chemical impact and reaction with the coffee beans. The independent variable was the roasting temperature. The dependent variable was the pH amount and the amount of total dissolved solids. The control was the unroasted batch of beans. And constants were everything from the oven I used, the type of coffee bean, the brewing method, the amount of coffee, the grinding method, the water source, time intervals, and the testing methods of pH and total dissolved solids. The independent variable was measured in degrees Celsius. The dependent variable was measured using the pH scale and parts per million for total dissolved solids. The pH was tested using a VivoSun pH pen, and the TDS was using the 3-in-1 TDS meter. To begin, I separated green coffee beans into six batches, each of 175 grams. Then I roasted the batches for 15 minutes, stopping to stir at 5 minutes and 10 minutes throughout the process. The first batch was at 191 degrees Celsius, the second 204 degrees Celsius, the third 218, the fourth 232, the fifth 246 degrees Celsius, and the sixth batch of coffee beans was not roasted, as it was the control. Then the coffee beans of all six groups were ground for exactly 10 seconds. To brew the coffee, I added 250 milliliters of 75 degrees Celsius water with the ground beans and inserted a filter, stirred the mixture for 25 seconds, screwed on the lid, and brewed each cup. This process was repeated three times for each group for a total of 18 times. The pH was measured using the VivoSun accuracy meter and the TDS using the VivoSun TDS temperature meter. The data was recorded and the pH of each brew was averaged to compare to the different types of roast. This picture depicts how I measured the pH and the total dissolved solids. To minimize any potential risk, I wore gloves and goggles, closed-toed shoes, tied my hair back, didn't wear loose clothing. I handled glassware carefully, wore oven mitts when handling the warm oven pan, and an adult supervised the coffee roasting, grinding, and brewing. To begin, the data here shows that the pH, which started just below 5, increased all the way to an average of 6.74 pH. This shows that as the temperature increased from 191 all the way to 241 degrees Celsius, the pH actually increased. This direct relationship explains that as temperature increases, pH increases and gets closer and closer to a neutral pH of 7. However, the total dissolved solid trend is quite different. In fact, the total dissolved solids starts, started at almost 1,000 and went all the way down to 771 with one outlier group that dipped all the way to 742. This graph illustrates that as temperature increases, the total dissolved solid levels decreased. This graph illustrates that as temperature increased, the pH also increased and achieved a more neutral pH, almost to seven. These pictures show the apparent color change between bean color and brew color. The top picture also shows that as the temperature increased, the, ma the mass decreased, but the volume increased. 
The first part of my hypothesis was supported by the data. If coffee is roasted at a higher temperature, then it will be less acidic. Because as the temperature got higher, the pH rose and became closer and closer to a neutral pH of 7. So coffee brewed at a lower temperature is more acidic. The second part of my hypothesis, if coffee is roasted at a higher temperature, then it will have fewer total dissolved solids, was also supported with one outlier group. The data averages from 204 to 246 degrees Celsius all show a decrease in total dissolved solids, but the 260 degrees Celsius average was higher than the previous group of 246 degrees Celsius. The control group had an average total dissolved solids significantly low compared to all of the other data of 586. The inverse relationship that was present between total dissolved solid and temperature is exemplified because as temperature increases, total dissolved solid levels decrease. Uh, some possible sources of error in my experiment were stirring the coffee beans. I had to do it to prevent uneven roasting, but there's potential that it did release some heat. Uh, and there was also potential for uneven grinding, but investing in a high-tech coffee grinder could ensure perfectly uniform grinding and even more consistency. A positive reflection are the temperatures because they were the perfect range to tell the difference in the beans without having them too unroasted or burnt. Some possible adaptations. Um, in the future, I could add even more roasting temperatures and try for a broader scope. Um, I could also use different bean types or see what different bean flavors have an effect on the pH and total dissolved solids or if they're consistent with the experiment this time. My initial hypothesis was supported by the data, and this information is super valuable in helping people determine what kind of coffee they want to drink, especially if they have a sensitive stomach. Finally, thank you to my parents for their supervision during experimentation.